for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm involved with the Association of Advancing Automation, um, sitting on some of the boards and supporting that. Very passionate, but there's no one more passionate about our industry than your next speaker. Uh, very, very dear friend, long time uh, representative of our industry globally, certainly here in the, in the Americas, but globally he's given us a footprint across the world because of his passion and ability to communicate what we do on a global level and, and a, a local level. So I'm really proud to introduce my very, very good friend, dear friend, Jeff Bernstein, president of the A3. Thanks, Joe, and thanks to everyone for being here. I want to apologize uh, that Alex Shikani couldn't be here. He got sick this morning, so I'm going to do my best to fill in for him. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what the future looks like. Does it really look like humanoids, by the way? I, everybody's talking about humanoids, and I'll be talking about humanoids as well, and we see some in the show, but I don't know yet. I think there's a lot of hype around humanoids. I'm not sure that the customers care what the form factor is, frankly. They want a solution, and the solution may not be a humanoid. Are humanoids safe enough yet? I don't think so. I don't think any of them are working around people, although Agility has got a nice demo of uh, where they're headed, and they're, I think they're doing things the right way. But when you read some of this stuff about what Figure is putting out, that they're going to ship 100,000 in the next four years, I take that with a grain of salt. So um, it's really interesting to see what's possible, not only in factories and warehouses, but hopefully one day in our homes to have a multi-purpose humanoid robot that can do the cooking and cleaning and the other tasks that we don't want to do, particularly useful potentially in elder care. Certainly not now. I don't think you would want a humanoid robot in your house today. The other thing that's not clear, do they have to be walking on two legs? Or can they be on a mobile base? Some applications, that may be better. So a lot of talk about humanoids, and I'm happy to talk about it as much as anyone because we're trying to educate people on this. We have a humanoid robot forum coming up in Seattle on September 23rd, our second annual one. So it's a space definitely you want to keep track of, but it may or may not be the future. So obviously heavy investments, tons of money being bet on this. Um, Aptronic just raised a whole bunch of money, another company they have great respect for. I think Aptronic is doing things the right way. The companies that only show videos, I'm not as sold on yet, but the companies that actually are doing things where the rubber re meets the road, I, I believe in. This is another project to bring back American jobs. Well, if we're going to create 100,000 new American jobs, we're going to need to have automation, and a lot more automation than we have today. So let's look at the current state of the robotics market. So we've been collecting statistics on robotics for well over three decades now uh, on a quarterly basis reporting where we are. So we have a pretty good handle of the traditional industrial robot market, collaborative robot market. We'll be talking about autonomous mobile robots, but it won't be our data. So 2024, it was a flat year which isn't so bad because the year before was down 30%. So we, we stopped the bleeding. We're actually up slightly. So that was relatively good news. When you look at sort of the history of where we've been, you see that we had this huge surge in 2021 and 2022, a record year. Why was that? Well, I think it had a lot to do with companies buying robots so that they knew they would have them because they were worried about supply chain issues. It was taking forever to get products shipped to them. And they're still working off that inventory. And that, I think, explains why we're not seeing the big jumps again that we were seeing. Um, but it, this will change. If you look at what happened in, over time, I go back to 1983 and robots to the auto industry, that was like 80% of the market. And for those of us who were working in the association or in the industry, we knew that's not going to be sustainable forever. We have to develop new industries. And if you look at where we are today, that red bar is slightly ahead of 
the automotive. So the non-automotive all rolled together is now slightly ahead of automotive. Now, look, we want both of them to grow. We don't care if, if automotive jumps a little bit ahead because they buy in bigger numbers. That would make sense. But the fact that that red bar is growing over time, that's a really positive sign. The industries that are starting to adopt robotics, agriculture, construction, life sciences, food and beverage, and we'll be talking about them. Those are going to be critical to our sustained growth in the future. And in fact, it's really hard to think of an industry that isn't automating or that shouldn't be automating or that isn't looking at automating because it's the only way forward. It's the only way to be globally competitive. And there'll be other issues that we'll talk about, such as labor challenges, where you have to have automation fill in. So we keep a close eye on certain trends. These suspended or canceled battery investments indicate that maybe the electrical vehicle movement that we thought was going to happen isn't going to happen here that quickly. So hopefully it will. A lot of it may be Chinese electric vehicles that we're seeing for a while, though. So back to what industries were growing in 24. Food and consumer goods, that's great. Life sciences, and pharmaceutical and biomedical. Automotive OEM was up. Um, the automotive component market was down. But if you look at the fourth quarter, things turned up a little bit better. So we were pretty, you know, wouldn't say thrilled at the way the year ended, but the fourth quarter was pretty good relatively. So that was a good indicator that maybe things will turn up again soon. So this is the long-term trend. So again, looking at this from my perspective, if we would have had a year that the market went down 30% like it did in 2023, we would have been extremely nervous about the future. But now we can handle that. Because if you look at the long-term growth projection, you'll see we're still heading up. I still believe we're in the early days of automating with robotics. We have a long way to go, in part because of all these industries that are just getting started. There's so many new applications out there. If we can make it easier to use, and we had a really good um, depalletizing presentation here earlier, making it easier to do that task, there are a lot of tasks that can be made easier that companies will see they really need to be adopting robots. So let's take a look at some other industry trends. I mentioned all these industries that are automating. These are just a few of them, a few samples that we picked. This is a good one. Parcel volume surge keeps growing. Means there's a lot of need for warehousing and distribution robots. That's not slowing down anytime soon. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit of this video. What they're doing is pretty significant. I hope I don't have to narrate it, but we'll see. If you wanna know how automation, AI, and people are working together, you can see it inside this three million square foot building where Amazon employs more than 1,400 people and stores up to 40 million products. Amazon says it logged its biggest Thanksgiving holiday shopping period ever this year, and data shows consumers spent a record $10.8 billion online on Black Friday alone, 10% more than last year, making this kind of efficiency the future. I'm here actually. It's possible because here everything is containerized. Instead of humans walking miles a day to get products off the shelves, the items are put into blue and yellow bins that robots can easily maneuver. We don't want people to lift heavy objects. We don't want people to take uh, boxes and put it over their head or reach down really low. If we can have a robotic system do that for our employees, all the better. The Through engine. Amazon's upskilling program, people who used to do manual labor jobs are now moving into jobs overseeing, repairing, and programming these machines. Amazon says these roles can offer pay that's up to 40% higher than entry-level jobs. Once the items are sorted, they head here to Sequoia, where humans and robots work together. The goods are coming to the person on demand at just the right time, and we designed the system in order to be ergonomic for our people, right? Yeah. So he's not bending down, he's not exactly. reaching Exactly. There's no ladders to reach up, he's not bending down on his knees, right? It's in the, the Goldilocks zone or the power That's zone. That's right. This Proteus. is Proteus. As you can see, it's carrying a bunch of Amazon items ready for delivery, and it has little eyes on its face, and it can sense when we're close to it, It'll chirp and stop when it notices people are in the way. Please, carry on. 
It looks like a Roomba on steroids, but these robots work on the floor, and when there aren't enough of them, human workers push and pull those heavy carts. Brady says the future will never be fully automated because people need to design and program the robots and keep them running. So I think that's pretty important. I think that's plus one's message, right? Robots work, people rule. And I don't think we're going to be getting rid of people anytime soon. But this facility is extremely automated. And if Amazon's doing it, then Walmart will be doing it, Target. So you'll see a lot more automation in warehouses. I think I heard a statistic, something like 80% of the warehouses today don't have any robots in them. So there's a long way to go. Why are AMRs growing? Well, a lot of advantages over AGVs. And um, you can integrate it with other automation. So big future for AMRs. This is the forecast that is done by an outside group that we work with. And they see big numbers here in this space. And um, if this is right, then again, I said we were in the early days of robotics from the standpoint of robots that have been around a long time. Well, we're certainly in the early days of this type of robot. Back to humanoids. So. China is making a big bet on humanoids. They've got all kinds of companies. They've got government training centers. So they certainly believe in it. And um, that's another reason why I think US companies are investing heavily to try and keep up. Obviously, agriculture, there are applications in weeding and um, doing things, spraying, that really we didn't envision in the early days of robotics that agriculture would be a big potential market but it certainly is. I, we had a company speak at our annual meeting a few years ago about picking grapes in wine country. They could tell exactly when the grape was ready to be harvested, when it would produce the best wine. This was like in Bordeaux. So, you, man, if they're doing applications like that, what can't you think of that you could use robotics for? We have a member, Raise Robotics. They're doing a task to build high-rise buildings. It used to take people like an hour to do this tasks. The robot can do it in like 15 minutes. And they said in some of these buildings, that could take a year off the time it takes to build a building. I think it's amazing stuff that we're gonna see in construction. Okay, AI, well, we know AI is getting better. It's getting better than humans in some areas. And I think it's gonna continue to improve. Hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully humans stay in charge and the AI doesn't take over. I'm, a, I'm an optimist on these things. You know, we talked about robots replacing workers. I believe that jobs change, automation changes jobs, new jobs are created, we always find things to do. We're good at that as people, to figure out how to do tasks that we want to do. How many of you in the audience would have said 30 years ago that there would be a good high paying job called Search Engine Optimization Specialist. Any hands for that one 30 years ago? I don't think so. And I think we can't even envision the jobs that robots and AI and these other technologies are going to enable in the future. This is a video that I believe is going to play. It's not just about making our manufacturing companies and our warehouses better. These technologies can make our lives better. Developing new medications has historically been a slow process, requiring years of trial and error research, millions of dollars, and often luck. Finding drugs is like finding needles in haystack. But Dr. Alan Aspudu-Guzik and his team say AI can speed everything up. Last year, using three separate applications of AI, Aspudu Guzik's lab created a new compound that could help treat a type of liver cancer in a fraction of the time it takes for most drug discoveries. AI is good about finding patterns that the humans don't find as obvious. We use all the data to do less trials, less, less computational attempts at finding the solution. Combined with automated robots, they could fine tune that design faster than humans can with what they call a self-driving lab. So this is a robot that allows us to actually carry out liquid dispensing, powder dispensing, etc. Co combined with a robot, we can actually make our reactions happen here. So you're not standing over a little flame holding a, a yeah. beaker. <laughs> AI helped us go 200 times faster to find the best molecule. So every time we made a molecule, AI found hints. It's like a sleuth, right? And told us this is the next best molecule to make. All in, it took the lab just 30 days to find a potential drug compound for liver cancer. 
in what normally takes a year or two. So think about this as a productivity tool for scientists. If the scientists can be thinking higher level things, can be organizing experiments that are way more parallel. We can actually accelerate scientific discovery. What we want the scientists to do is to be more productive, to solve the problems that are pressing for society nowadays. So I want you to think about that when you talk to people about what work you do. You say, I'm in robotics or automation. People say, oh, you're going to put everybody out of work. Think about that video. And if you know that this is going to actually make our lives better, somebody who has cancer, maybe they can find a treatment or a cure. People really respond to that kind of application. And I think it's really important that we talk about these things that go beyond our, our work life. So let's look a little bit forward. What do we expect this year in terms of the market? Well, we survey our members on this, and most people think 25 will be a better year than 24. Now, there are some uncertainties, obviously. We don't know about tariffs and trade wars and those things, but Generally, people are pretty positive, and I hope it's because they're seeing an uptick. I've talked to some people on the floor today that are seeing an uptick in business as the year starts, so hopefully there's good news ahead. Bullish future, absolutely. Think about the dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs that are out there that people don't want to do. This is why warehouses have to have um, automation. They can't find people, and if they do find them, they can't keep them because... Nobody should have to do some of these jobs, walking miles and miles a day, lifting heavy boxes. Um, people want to do things. That they go home at the end of the day. They feel good about it. They feel good physically. They're using their, their brain, not just carrying heavy things. This talks about labor shortages and demogra uh, demographic shifts. Well, I can't think of any industry that's not suffering from labor shortages. Even the suppliers in our industry are still struggling from that. And I think every end user, retail, restaurant, um, you name it, can't find people looking at automation. If you want to learn more and see more of these technologies, please come to Automate in Detroit, May 12 to 15. It's going to be a great show, our largest ever. We're expecting uh, over 850 exhibitors, over 35,000 registrants. It's going to really be a terrific show. And um, if you're not familiar with A3, we're a trade association that promotes these technologies, robotics, vision, motion control, and artificial intelligence and related automation technologies. Over 1,350 members were active globally. And you can learn more at automate.org. And Alex sends his regards. And um, I want to thank you personally for being here to listen. So thank you very much.